Welcome to part four, the final part of this presentation on new music business models. My name is Kristen Thompson, and I'm the Education Director for the Future of Music Coalition. Remember that this presentation also includes two additional documents available on the FMC website. Visit futuremusic.org slash files slash new business models dot pdf or futuremusic.org slash files slash digital distribution dot pdf for details. Here's another revenue stream that has been changed by the internet, music licensing. By licensing, we mean the process of an artist or songwriter signing a short-term agreement for their music to be used in an ad, in a TV show, in a movie, or something like that. This is a very interesting revenue stream for musicians and songwriters, not only because there are lots of creative projects that need music, but usually musicians can negotiate a specific fee for this use but not give away their copyrights in perpetuity in the process. Licensing has typically been a direct negotiation between someone re representing the artist, usually the publisher, the manager, the label, or their lawyers, and someone representing the outlet that wants to license the work, like the TV studio or the ad agency. Despite the cumbersome nature, nature of these negotiations, many people like it this way, since it gives the musician not only the ability to negotiate a specific fee, but also the right to say no to projects they don't want to be associated with. But thanks to the internet, there are now streamlined processes that get more artists' music in front of more music supervisors. This is Rumblefish, a B2B model where artists can post their music to have it be licensed to film and TV and for other uses. Here's a licensing form for a band called True Love Always. Similar to the process offered by Magnatune, an ad agency rep or a music supervisor could log in to Rumblefish, preview the song, set criteria for their proposed license, such as the length of their use, the territory, the duration, and it would generate a price. And the uh, supervisor could purchase a license for that specific use without having to get any lawyers involved. Note that artists do give up two important things if they participate in this model. The right to negotiate a higher price and the right to say no to a project. However, for those artists simply wanting to offer their music up for license, this certainly streamlines the process. In the case of working with Rumblefish, revenue from licensing deals is split 50-50, with Rumblefish getting 50% and the artist, or the artist label getting the other 50%. Next, I want to show you a few new webcasting and internet radio models. Many terrestrial radio stations now offer a stream of their programming. This makes it possible for anyone with an internet connection to access radio stations across the country or around the world. Here's a screenshot from Seattle, Seattle's KEXP to show that their website allows users to access the live stream, see what's playing now, and look at what's been played on their archived playlists. The stream is free for listeners, but performers, songwriters, and labels each receive a performance royalty. Songwriters are paid by their performance rights organization, ASCAP, BMI, or CSEC, and the publishers and labels are paid by SoundExchange. KEXP also offers a buy button next to each song that directs people to Amazon, iTunes, or a handful of local Seattle record stores for album purchases. There are also internet-only stations, meaning they only exist online. Here's Counterstream Radio, which is a project of the American Music Center that focuses on contemporary classical and new American music. Again, it streams free to listeners, but composers, performers, and labels are paid digital performance royalties via the Performance Rights Organization and Sound Exchange. Here's a screenshot from Pandora, which is an internet radio site that facilitates personalized music discovery. First, you pop in the name of an artist you like, and then Pandora builds a streaming radio station of songs that are like that song. For a music fan, it's a free and great way to discover new music. And again, songwriters, performers, and labels are each paid simultaneously and directly through the performance rights organizations and sound exchange. One of the greatest developments for Pandora was their first mover offer on an iPhone app, which makes it possible to play your Pandora stations on your iPhone. The app has been incredibly popular and has boosted Pandora's user base considerably over the past year. Again, it feels free to the listener, but Pandora is paying digital and songwriter performance royalties. Here's Last FM. Similar to Pandora, Last FM lets you listen to your favorite music, 
discover other artists, and build playlists. There's also a social networking component to Last.fm, as well as tracking which songs are played the most in a week and in the last six months. MySpace, Slacker, iLike, iMeme, and Mog are other services that, services that are offering similar streaming meet social networking options. Some of you may be wondering, just how do independent artists get their music into these services? We encourage you to download our digital distribution worksheet to see the details, but for now I'll just give you a quick overview. First, it's important to know that digital music services like iTunes and Rhapsody do not deal directly with individual artists. They don't have the staff or the capacity to deal directly with particular bands. Instead, the services accept content either directly from record labels or from aggregators who help musicians get their music onto these platforms. For artists that are not signed to a record label, there are a number of aggregators out there. We'll just show you a couple that are widely used, CD Baby and TuneCore. But we also encourage you to check out the digital distribution options from Reverb Nation, Nimbit, and Amazon's CreateSpace. In each case, these companies have different offerings, but will each help an individual artist get their music into a wide array of digital music services for a very affordable price. You may remember CD Baby from the first set of slides. Musicians pay a one-time fee of $35, and when they have a new release, they send about 10 CDs to CD Baby, and they build a web page where consumers can learn about their new release. From there, CD Baby can do three things for a musician. It can service the mail order backend for their records, sending out CDs to anyone that purchases it. It can also offer your album or songs for sale as digital downloads. And if the musician chooses, CD Baby can act as your aggregator, delivering your music to dozens of digital stores and, and services. And here's what the musician is paid for sales through these different means. If a fan purchases a physical CD via CD Baby for $10, the musician gets $6 and CD Baby keeps four. If a fan purchases the same CD as a digital download off the CD Baby site, the musician would get $7.50 and CD Baby would get $2.50. If a fan purchases the same CD on iTunes for $9.99, the musician gets 91% of what iTunes sends to CD Baby, or about $6.35, and CD Baby gets about $0.63. Cents. And no matter where the musician sells some music, CD Baby pays what it's owed to artists every Monday. TuneCore focuses on delivering independent content to all the digital music stores. After a musician uploads his or her music and chooses which service they want to be included in, TuneCore encodes and delivers the music and the data to the right places. And for sales, the musician keeps 100% of the revenue that the music services send to TuneCore. TuneCore also offers a very robust backend. For musicians who are receiving income from sales, TuneCore allows you to log in to request a payment, do a direct deposit into your bank account, even direct other payments to other band members or creators from that particular source. For independent artists that represent an, independent labels that represent a number of artists, the label either has made deals, direct deals with each of the services and submits their new releases directly, or more likely, the label uses an aggregator like IOTA or The Orchard. These aggregators facilitate the process of getting all the labels, music, and the data into dozens and dozens of services. Everything from iTunes and Zune to eMusic to places that make ringtones or offer promotional streams. For their part in the process, the aggregators keep a small percentage. Then they send the rest of the revenue to the label to distribute it to musicians according to the plays and the downloads that the band has received. So that concludes this 20-minute tour of new music business models. While the businesses themselves will undoubtedly change over the next months and years, it's clear to us at FMC that the internet has facilitated a dramatic change in musicians' access to these models. Today's artists have a huge array of services and platforms on which to sell their music, and fans have more ways than ever to listen to or discover or purchase music in ways that ensure that revenue flows back to the creators. Future of Music Coalition is a national nonprofit organization that works to ensure a diverse musical culture where artists flourish, are compensated fairly for their work, and where fans can find the music they want. 
We hope you enjoyed this presentation and encourage you to connect with us for more practical information. Visit our website where you can read more articles or fact sheets about particular issues. Subscribe to our daily blog or our monthly newsletter. Become a fan on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or MySpace. Or check, us, check out more of our videos on our YouTube channel. Finally, FMC relies on contributions from people like you to do this work. Visit futuremusic.org slash donate to make a tax-deductible donation today. And thanks for watching.